Thank you. Um, first, I, I, you know, I just I want to let you know that I'm a former um, elected person in Marin County, and part of the reason I was unelected was trying to get some housing built in the derelict strip mall for redevelopment. And so, the point that Pat raises about how the community um, will shout out, you know, very clearly, um, is you know, is is a real point, especially for policymakers. I have to tell you, I'm really happy not being uh, an elected person anymore. I'm on the faculty at UC Davis now. Um, but I, I, you made a couple of compelling statements. One, that California has the highest rate of poverty. And I wanted to be clear that you meant that and not just the highest number of people living in poverty. Shocking, right? Especially in relationship to states like Arkansas mm -hmm. and Kentucky. Yeah. I mean, is that really um, yeah. true? We have the highest rate of poverty in the nation, the highest rate, it's about 25.3%. And this is not due to the uh, absolute relative, in, uh, the absolute income. It's due to the income and the cost of living in the state. The thing that drives the cost of living in the state up more than anything else is lack of supply of housing. And that's the, that's the fundamental underlying principle of, of the housing recommendations in the report. So I just want to throw out a few of my own you know, comments about thinking about this. And you know, thinking about the housing that's in already impoverished neighborhoods that's derelict and substandard, and how do we you know, invest in redeveloping those communities? How do we um, uh, look at the issues that are coming up, like using housing for grow houses for marijuana, or Airbnb you know, for people to make money off of their houses that could be residences for people? There's a lot of you know, complicating um, issues that are also contributing to this yeah. factor. And then, you know, the, the whole point about like the tiny house movement, having just bought a house in Sacramento, um, where you get a lot more bang for your buck <laughs> for housing, um, you know, just when we're thinking of housing, um, you know, my, I want to bring the overarching picture of climate change and population growth and yeah. how many billions of people living on the planet over the next 30 years and how many resources we use to build the 4,000, 5,000 square foot house that the doctor might want to live in versus something smaller to actually address energy efficiency, water efficiency, you know, climate change, the actual a suitable size. I grew up in San Francisco in a J5 house. There were eight of us, my two parents and six kids, and we lived quite happily in a two bedroom, one bathroom house in bunk beds. I never realized that not having my own bedroom was somehow um, a deficiency. And I think culturally, when you look at how other people live around the world and what our expectations are for housing, we're creating some pretty big problems related to our footprint, to how we use energy and resources. And I would hope that as the business community is looking at this, that they're also looking at it from the lens of what's happening to our planet, yeah. you know, 20, 30 years down the road. And yeah, no question. I mean, we're doing a ton of stuff on climate change and sea level rise, not included in this report. Uh, ADUs are certainly a part of that. And I think I'll just, it'll all be point well taken. I think there's been enough excitement here without my wading into the marijuana growing houses uh, <laughs> uh, conversation. Up the medicine, I'm on a pavement, thinking about the government.